What's happening, guys? I hope everybody had a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. It's nice to have that forced day off, three days, feet up. You don't have to worry about stocks. Think about stocks unless you're me and you're here making a video. Uh, I am fitting this in uh, in between. My wife is on her way up with the kids, uh, and I had to go up north uh, for a meeting this, uh, this morning. So I figured I might as well try to get a little of this done before uh, the day. I'm going to go out on the boat. And then once I am done and I get home, I'm going to finish up the rest of the uh, video. And I'll probably go over a couple uh, trades from uh, last week, the concepts that we talked about on Sunday and how they sort of played out during the week. Uh, and then we'll go into the week ahead. However, you know, we're just in a, in a market where it's, it's less about uh, necessarily the, the prep and it's more about the mindset. And uh, I feel like you could, you could come super prepared for, for certain names. Um, but it doesn't really doesn't really matter if your mindset's off. And you know, right now you have to have an open mind. You have to have uh, an imagination. And I, I talked about AI over the last you know week or two, where uh, I felt like it had all the markings for a potential outlier move. And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You know, we'll find out this week. Obviously, it closed extremely strong in the right around thirty three or so. But you know, this is one of those you know, probably the most hated name. Right. In, in a sense, uh, it's been bashed. There was uh, there was uh, research put out about it completely unwound over, you know, 50 percent off the highs and just a very, very, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, hated name. And then all of a sudden it's higher and then it's higher and then it's higher. And when that happens, I, you know, you got to take note of that. And so to me, it just feels like and unless they add more options, I, I think uh, June only goes to 40. So there is that potential of something that we haven't seen in a while. And I had said, you know, just have your guard up in case we have an LCID or a CVNA style move. And what I meant by that is, you know, something that just starts to go and it, maybe it's up three bucks and five bucks. And all of a sudden you look and it's it's basically up, you know, eight or ten bucks. And you're like, how the heck did this happen? And. So all the writing is on the wall. It's just whether or not it happens. And I think that you should at least be uh, aware of that. Don't be fighting. You know, when stuff goes two to three, there's, there's a high chance that it could go five, six, eight, you know, and so on and so forth. So be aware of that. Be cautious. Just because it's going higher does not mean it's a better short, right? That's outlier ac activity. I mean, that, that stuff can last longer than, you know, you can remain solvent, basically, right? Um, so never underestimate you know, these just like we don't underestimate a bear market rally, we don't underestimate these parabolic style moves. So just be aware of that. Maybe maybe I'm talking and it completely comes in 30 percent on Monday. Right. We don't know. But NVIDIA power earnings uh, completely, you know, brought money into uh, the AI sector. And basically everybody's looking for any AI that hasn't moved yet. And even some of the, you know, the crap ones are starting to get bids as well. So. You got to just adapt and, and go with it. And if you guys remember that embrace the chase uh, shirt that I had made, that's what this is about. You know, it, yes, you're not supposed to be chasing with crazy size. But, you know, at some point you just have to come to the realization that the market is rewarding chasers. So as long as you have a set risk game plan uh, and you know what you're doing, then, you know, it, it is what it is. There are markets where it's OK to chase particular moves and, and you look at a stock that's up 30 percent. It should be flat. Um, but that 30% move was a deal when it's about to run 100% in certain market cycles. And in, cur in this current market, uh, we are in a reward recklessness, uh, reward holders, reward long type of market. So um, we just have to be aware of that. Uh, and I talked about being patient, not, you know, not going for things off the open. I've completely changed, you know, the way in which that I've been trading over the last, you know, month alone. I've probably taken the least amount of, um, you know, trades pre-market and probably the least amount of trades off the open. There's been some, you know, like the NVIDIA day. We had that. I had a whole plan around uh, Palantir and, and uh, AI and, and a few other different names, IONQ. And that was all a result of the NVIDIA move. But, you know, as far as, as you know, pushing buttons, I'm trying to get to the desk as late as possible. I don't want to be involved pre-market because, you know, there's no real upside. Um, you know, sometimes you get a, a quick scalp and yeah, sure. Maybe it's, it's a, a good, um, quick buck, but then if you overstay, then you've just made yourself stick, you know, to your desk for another hour or two that you didn't really necessarily need to. And there was no upside. And I always, that's what I look for. 
what what is the opportunity cost? Am I am I staying here uh, taking this trade and it starts to flatline? I'm on the right side of the trade, so I'm going to let it work. Now I've just added two hours to my day, or should I just cover and come back towards the open or shortly after open? And and that's really what uh, I'm exploring as far as balance and you know making sure that I'm making the right choices. So maybe that relates to some of you, maybe it doesn't, but my current goal in this market is patience. Wait for the setup. Don't try to find the the front side, uh, you know, the the top on the front side of the move. Let let it all happen. And the one key thing that I keep coming back to is focus on, you know, the let everybody pay for the information, let it exhaust, but wait for sellers to show up. Don't anticipate sellers to showing, you know, show up. Sometimes in in like PLTR on on Friday and AI, you get this huge red candle, and it's like, all right, that's it. Like it's it's fading. Sellers are here. You don't know. Was that just shorts hammering it? Was that just quick profit taking? So we always need to wait to see how it reacts off that flush comes back. Does it stay heavy or does it start to grind? If it stays relatively thin, if it starts to grind, then there is no edge on the short side. And that's what we have to remember. Um, So keep that in mind and, um, you know, be cautious for the week ahead. I did ask for a couple questions. You know, a couple uh, people asked how to find edge. Uh, one of the ones that uh, I figured we could talk about, uh, keto trading asked uh, the easy to borrowness of current plays. Do you size down if you know a lot of players can get trapped in the wrong side? That's when one of the comments that uh, we've been talking about every Sunday, where uh, I think it's important to uh, realize when there's only one or two trades that are going right in small cap land, because what happens is you know the small small cap players they just the brain resets and they forget. Um, how difficult uh, these trades are when there's only one or two. And everybody goes for the same thing. There's a lot of good information now as far as filings and offerings and ATMs and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of people still don't put enough effort into looking at the tape and letting it tell you, right? Sometimes people come and they take a short, it starts to fade off the open, and you know it starts to flatline for an hour or two. But they're confident because it has an ATM. But is there really an edge there or are they just anticipating that they're going to sell? If they're not breaking new lows by 10 or 11 a.m., are they really tapping the ATM? Probably not. So I think that the uh, ease of information that's out there has now, you know, the edge went from not many people knew about filings and offerings and, and um, ATMs and all of that kind of edge to now everybody uh, understands it, that, that the potential, but doesn't really understand that the price action has to agree too. And so people are making decisions based off, you know, the the filings, but not based off the price action. So to me, price action always trumps all. And you should probably think about that when you are anticipating uh, or at least trying some sort of fundamental sort of trade. Um, Other than that, a couple other questions, you know, is this AI bubble or are we just looking just getting started? You know, and, and it's possible that we're just getting started. I would never underestimate how long things can last. New money comes in. Um, and you know, now we've got this debt deal type thing. I mean, who knows how that's going to react, but I would say that right now, uh, as far as getting prepared for the week ahead, it's less about, you know, going through and having this list of, of names. I think you should have your top two or three names that you feel are overextended and wait for those setups to kind of form. So for example, you might have AI, you might have PLTR, IONQ, different names like that, NVIDIA. But if NVIDIA does not stay heavy, if it's not staying heavy uh, versus, you know, 9.45, 10 a.m. levels, BWAP, uh, then, you know, you're probably focusing on the wrong day. You want the market to agree with you. You don't want to be anticipating the turn, right? Just like we talk about Bitcoin. You could trade Mara and um, Riot and Coin, and those are all great trades, but you don't really get that outlier move unless Bitcoin is unwinding that day or, or it's breaking out, right? Those are the only two ways that you get those outlier moves. So in, in the same situation, if you're looking for an AI you know, breakout or, or a short, you want to make sure that the overall sentiment, the overall like, market, um, you know, all the, the basket of names agree. Are they breaking down or are they staying strong? Is NVIDIA breaking out to 410, 420 next week? Then why are you shorting you know, AI names? Because people are going to start to, you know, okay, they missed NVIDIA, so what else can they get that's maybe a little bit cheaper? 
they're going to focus on the next one, next one, next one. And then that brings that, you know, just like when COVID happened, everybody came into all the, uh, the COVID style names, any of the virus type names, uh, I don't even know, VXRT back then, NBIV, mRNA. I mean, you name it. Anybody that could do test, they had PRs that came out, right? So now we're going to have everybody coming out with PRs on, on AI. And who knows what it even means. Um, it could just mean that they added a widget on their website. But people don't care. And the, the crappier it is, the more people they know. <laughs> the funny part about small caps is the crappier it is, crappier the PR, the more they rehash, people know it's junk. So then they hammer it. There's so many people that believe it ends up going because smart money shorted, dumb money bought, no offense. They're actually the smart ones here. <laughs> and then, you know, there's no inventory, so shorts get squeezed. And so we, that was sort of what created the GME and the, you know, all these AMC type. You have literally a, a, a near bankrupt name. It makes zero sense to get long, but it's a supply and demand issue. And if there's too much supply from shorts, not sellers. And that's the point here. You want the supply to come from sellers. And when things are holding past 10, 11 a.m., and like the, the question was, you know, the easy to borrowness. You know, if there's only one or two trades and it's very easy to borrow, very cheap to borrow, then that's when I want to have my guard up and I want to be patient. So again, in this market, I've been extremely focused on uh, just really uh, being patient off the open, not pushing buttons pre-market. And just looking at a more macro perspective instead of, you know, just having, you know, a little microscope and looking at like all these little moves. Like I talk about with with people that sometimes have a, a it almost looks like an exit before their entry. Right. Think about, you know, what am I looking at here? What What's the big picture trade here? And again, like I was uh, kind of referring to or earlier, you want to you want to make sure that you can feel comfortable getting off desk for a minute. And if you don't maybe there's not enough edge or maybe you have too much size and that's something very simple that you can kind of explore and you know i know myself too it's like i i just feel better you know on, on a day-to-day -day basis if i can get off the the desk at any time and not really worry about you know is it going to swipe into a circuit halt and i'm screwed or not and if it can then i want to size down or or maybe i want to get out of that that trade altogether and just wait for a, a better setup so these are little simple things that you have to listen to yourself. And we talk about these things during the day. Sometimes I see people in the traders uh, lounge uh, talking about, well, hey, maybe it's this time. I'm, I'm going to try it again just in case it, this is the time. But listen to you know what you're saying. Listen to you know how you feel about uh, these particular you know setups. And a lot of times you can learn a lot about yourself. And, and you hear these triggers that actually mean, hey, you have no edge. Get out, right? You can always get right back in. And for whatever reason, people are afraid to pay that commission or, I mean, some commissions even free now. But for whatever reason, they'd rather stop out or lose than just get out and get back in a, a little bit later. So let me just see if there's any other questions that I want to go over. Uh, have you seen that typically trading around a core position tends to be more successful compared to taking one or two entries uh, to enter full size position and allowing it to play out? You know, that's it depends on your personality, you know. For me personally, I need action. Uh, you know, not not that I I have to push a button, but if I'm trading something, I'd like to get a, a, a you know be aggressive in it if I can. And so sometimes that that means I'm scaling in, and if it doesn't flush immediately, then I'm gonna go back to my core. Then as it sets up again and it looks like it's about to flush, I want to scale in, and if it doesn't, I'll size back down. If it flushes, I'll size back down. But I'm trying to you know leverage based off this already good trade that I have and, you know, seeing a setup form again. So if I can do that and I can scale into that trade, I'm going to turn what maybe was, you know, a thousand dollar risk into a 10, 20, $30,000 winner, you know, off that same risk because I'm scaling in and out, in and out with the house's money. That's always my goal. So yes, there's definitely some traders that may do a lot better with one or two entries. Uh, it just depends on what fits your own personality and no right way. Uh, no, no one way is the right way. It just has to fit with, with you. And, um, you know, for me, you know, I'm there during the day and I like to kind of be in the action, get good feel for things and, and kind of get the reads that I do. So, um, could I get that same, you know, read and that same feel doing one or two entries? Maybe, maybe not. 
Uh, but I feel like being in there and kind of seeing, you know, sometimes when I'm trying to get a cover and, you know, I, I get a little bit and then it jumps up and a little bit and then it jumps up and it's always kind of outbidding me. That to me is a sign that, hey, maybe this is not a short, it's a long. So being in that tape and getting that feel, you know, sometimes is, you know, what it's all about. And um, again, that could be uh, that could be beneficial for some or it could, you know, you could turn into a super choppy trader and it's not good for you. So every personality is different. You just have to find out what works for, for you. Um, but other than that, uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into Sunday video and uh, at least give you a, um, a glimpse as to what I'm looking at for the week ahead. Uh, it is not one of those markets, I feel like, where you have to get super prepared. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be prepared, but just I feel like it's less about the what stocks am I going to trade and more about like where are we at in this cycle and, and how crazy is it potentially going to get. And so we had the debt ceiling, uh, you know, we had the, the, the headline last night. Uh, I'm recording this on Sunday, so Saturday night. Um, and then we also have, you know, this whole AI revolution. Everybody gets excited. So there is a good chance that we have some huge gaps. So, you know, I think you should be prepared with two scenarios. You know, if we gap up, where could things open up to? And then you have one potential trade. If we gap down and we stop going down, it starts to get absorbed for red to green, where would you get long and where would you risk towards? So I think that's more powerful in this market than coming in and researching a bunch of different trades uh, to potentially trade. Price alerts has been key for me. I typically draw a line. Every time a stock goes up and comes back, dips and rips, I draw a line. And the reason I do that is because it reminds me visually, don't screw around with it. Just wait, just wait for this level to break. If it never breaks, that means that it's just shorts and sellers all you know, go going ahead and, and taking some off the table, but no real seller has showed up that's gonna change the trend and, and stay there. So um, I think that's very important. Be cautious out there. Uh, but as always, for the second part of scan, not a financial advisor. These are not buy or sell recommendations, and this is for educational and informational purposes only. First and foremost, a little bit of housekeeping for the winners last week. We have Neat Scalping on Twitter, and we have, let's see, uh, Pop MCQ. And so you guys are the winners for the t-shirts this week. Again, all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section or retweet on Twitter or like, and I will pick from each of those spots. First and foremost, for the week ahead, main watches. One of them is going to be AI. AI obviously has been a, a ridiculous runner. You know, this is one of those where, you know, maybe we're all prepared and, and it does nothing. You know, the, the 3rd of, of April, it went up to about 34.68. And it's possible that we just clear out that level and we fade right back down. Uh, that's going to be to be determined. Uh, it's possible that we go 40, 45, 50. It's possible we go crazy. Uh, but I want to have two kind of preparations. One would be if it gaps up and it goes 34, 35, exhaust out, stays heavy. I want to have a, a game plan there. And, you know, if that was the case, then I'd be looking to start in and scale each time that it basically does a swipe test, as we call it. So basically, you know, you need to build in swipe risk because you don't know if, you know, it starts to walk down sideways, if it's going to flush and come right back. And we saw that plenty of times, you know, sometimes on uh, moves like right over here where it flushes down, comes right back up. Or, you know, even something where people get excited and they see uh, lower highs, it starts to uh, stay a little bit heavy, but we have yet to really see if it swipes back up. You never know until it actually really, you know, test it. And when it tests it, if you are on the wrong side, you're going to get hurt. So swipe test essentially is giving yourself that ability to see how it reacts when it rebounds without being aggressive because what happens is a lot of times we start in we feel like we're doing the right thing it starts to have a little bit of failed fall through and it flushes down it's got this red candle and it just convinces you that everything you're doing is right and what i've come to 
uh, notice at least in the last couple months is it's better to let that happen and then prove again that it wants to stay heavy because most times you'll actually see that it actually does not stay heavy. So one of the things that I talk about during the day on these particular names is, yes, it did have a big red candle, but be patient. Give yourself five or 10 minutes and see if it stays heavy because in a situation like this, you're not going to miss the move. You want to be on the right side and you want to be on the right side of where the sellers are, you know, the right side of the tape. And if you are always kind of jumping the gun and assuming that this is the time, uh, a lot of times you'll realize that uh, you could have just waited a couple minutes and seen that you were wrong all along. So that said, two plans, gap up, ideally 30, you know, 33, 35 parabolic, blows out, failed follow through, or I'd be looking at probably a, a week open, maybe use 32s, uh, 3230, 32.50 as sort of a guide. If it comes into this level here and starts to base, I'd be interested in getting long for the breakout. And so that would be ideal. I'd, I'd have trouble chasing uh, a big move. But if it did have a week open and it had uh, you know, a little bit of consolidation around this level, I'd be looking for a potential red to green. So again, I'm prepared for both a gap up for the short and a week open for the red to green move. Uh, if it does go crazy, I've been talking about this for a little while uh, LCID, if you guys remember, it had this huge, you know, parabolic day and same thing, you know, CVNA, um, over here, we've had this huge move and then we had another one, you know, over here back, back when it was still over, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks. And, um, you know, it's been a fantastic trader and they just kind of came out of the blue. And so the only reason I'm saying this is because I know that people like to short every single pop on AI and, if you do see it start to have some outlier range and we are over, you know, this prior high over here, which was, you know, around 3450s or so, um, you have to have your guard up. You have to be cautious because, in my opinion, it does have the potential of an outlier move. Uh, so, again, reactive trade. We'll see what happens, but it's definitely going to be a great trade. One thing that I did say on Friday um, and... You know, I, I would probably be prepared for it for the week ahead. You know, it's it has great opportunities, right? It, it squeezes out, flushes down, 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 right? The problem, the problem is when you get on the right side of that trade, given the move, you want to let it work, right? But a lot of times it's just better to go ahead and, you know, if you nail the move, go ahead and cover if it stays heavy, you can always get back in. That's something very simple, but yet hard to do. PLTR, great levels on Friday. And, you know, as, as I said, it's very similar to, um, to AI, where, you know, every time it flushes down, this is just a, a quick little tip that, you know, can help you stay safe. And, so usually I, I look for where it flushes down. There's a little dip and rip candle right here. So that was the first level that I gave the room on uh, Friday. And I said 1310. There's no sizing. You know, it's fine if you want to start in. And, and granted, it went 13, you know, 20s to 1420s. And, you know, obviously it would have been a, a, a wrong trade. But it's fine if you're interested in starting in as long as you're not sized up because until it breaks under this 1310 line, it is in trend, right? It is grinding. It is going. And so the little trick is then you let it flush out and now you've got your next line, 1365, which was the next level I gave the room. And this is an ex the exact example that I'm talking about as far as swipe risk, where it's fading down, fading down, fading down. You've got one swipe slams down, Fading down, fading down, fading down, fading down, and then bam, swipes right back up. So anytime you're over this key line, you want to assume that it's going to hold. So again, you know, just to repeat, this is not stuff that's in hindsight. This is this is actually the levels given uh, in real time ahead of these moves. And you know, there was a lot of people that were interested in the short over here, and I reminded everybody that you know, 1365s is clearly a key. Uh, level. So the next time, you know, it starts to go, I start to look left and I start to kind of look for 
uh, where you know, this could potentially have failed follow through uh, momentum. So the goal ended up being basically a 14 to 1420, uh, you know, parabolic kind of move for failed follow through momentum back towards this line right here. So that's what we uh, were looking for in the room. And again, it's not about, you know, trying to find the top, but at this point when it starts to come back down and it peaks out at 14, I start to get interested knowing that it's still over VWAP Retest again, fails, and starts to fade off. Once you start to have higher lows, and you have this flush, dip and rip candle, dip and rip candle, that becomes a new level. So in order to get short, stay short, we have to see it under the 1350s, right? And so that is exactly the level that we talked about in the room. So uh, again, this is just to kind of showcase what I'm looking for during the day. And for whatever reason, everybody always likes to short the, you know, the, the, the big runners and, you know, the strongest names. But this is about how to make it a little bit more simple for you to identify when things are actually failing. It is normal for stocks to trend. It is normal for them to go up, come back down a little bit. That does not mean that it's over. It does not mean that it's bearish. It just means that it's trending. It's a stock. That's what they do. And so, you know, keep that in mind. And uh, that's sort of how I do it, just looking left, drawing a line every time it dips and it rips. It's just a visual reminder not to be silly. TIO, fantastic opportunity the last couple of days. I still do think that we are in for potential twos. I mean, we really could go all the way back down. Uh, in my opinion, this is just one big uh, pump and dump. Had the merger, squeezed everybody out. Um, what happens is, you know, when it does get saved with these kind of candles right here, you know, this next day, it wasn't really on my radar. You know, it's, it had a nice fade and then it gets saved and that's really, it, it takes a toll on you, especially if you're size again, you think, all right, this is the time that it's going to finally break. And then it goes all the way back up. That's what this candle kind of signifies. Uh, and then the next day you're like, eh, I'm just going to leave it alone. Yesterday was annoying, came all the way back. And then you look back and it's like, oh crap. You know, it unwound. So anyway, I've been keeping it on watch and I've been fading it as you've uh, likely seen. And so ideally we get a, another good push, 360s. And as long as it does not reclaim over 380s, my thesis stays intact. Uh, and basically the thesis and, and the reason why I picked that level, I think it ended up being like 377 or so. But uh, yeah, right here, this low day, you can see 377. Uh, looking left, right? So this day that it flushed down on heavy volume, that was the level to kind of assume that it was going to hold, especially this day. And then as it pushed back, we started to get resistance around that level and it stayed heavy. So I would stay with the same thesis until it proves me wrong, which would be basically a, a 380 kind of base starts to firm up. Uh, and in the way in which it would come back on radar or the edge would come back is basically a, an exhaustion move over that level, right? So anytime there is a big stuff move, if it gets soaked or there's a dip and rip, that voids the stuff move. Likewise, anytime there's a huge stuff, that voids whatever move was prior, such as a dip and a rip, soaking, things like that. And that's kind of the mentality that I use when sort of anticipating whether, or not anticipating, but whether or not uh, you know, I should be scaling into a trade or sort of hands off and waiting for a little bit more information. And I feel like most people do not uh, take the time to sort of look for that. And I think it would be beneficial if that was done. Uh, ELEV, next up is uh, failed follow through section. So failed follow through is you know, the, the names that I'm looking for. Ideally a, a, a power open, a little bit higher, you know, some sort of uh, breakout potential. Fantastic move here, but uh, 530s was the key that we identified, and I believe it was like 480s or so uh, for the um, the base. So you can kind of see just by doing a, a quick, um, you know, and again, they're not exact, but um, 530s was the level that I was using, kind of anticipating uh, exhaustion move each time. But once again, you can see exactly what we we're just talking about. You've got this huge stuff move right here. And then it immediately gets dipped and ripped right off this prior level that we had from earlier, right? So we knew that 475s was sort of a key level. We knew it right over here, dip and rip, comes back, 
the exhaust out, comes right back down to the 475 level and holds on. So until we really get out of this channel, there's no real edge. So you should anticipate or expect that 530 is going to blow out. You should expect or anticipate that 475 is probably going to soak. Uh, but as far as an edge in patience, you know, over 530s or under 475s is the only spot where uh, edge kind of comes back. So we'll see what happens. But if it were to open, say, 450s, 460s, I'd want it to kind of come into this range, exhaust out into potentially 475 to 5s and then fade off. Or if it starts to, you know, firm up, I'd be looking for dips. If 530s start to soak, potential squeeze out. And, you know, as far as outlier move, that would have to be over basically 590s. So call it, you know, six bucks or so. Um, so that's something that I'd be looking for on there. Uh, APLD is a great example of, you know, when you when how many times did you try it potentially last week and then you finally gave up on it? Similar to TIO, right? Where each day it just kind of got dipped and ripped and continued to soak. We had that big gap day over 10 and then it faded off. And one of my favorite things is sort of after that big red day that comes in, you know, big gap and fades, it has that morning shove, look left, and then fades off. Um, that's a really clean move. That's something that I really personally like. But pretty clean overall. Uh, and, you know, even if you did not participate in this uh, particular failed follow-through setup, it should look pretty familiar. And, and you know, you can kind of see failed follow through under this 10, 9, uh, 9, 10 level or so. Uh, but pretty clean, pretty clean move. Even if you didn't participate in that level, even, uh, you know, and, and you waited a little bit, at least you have that sub VWAP level. And as long as it doesn't cross back over VWAP, you know, stick with the trade. So, you know, as far as getting prepared, I'd be looking for the same thing. Ideally, it kind of comes right back up into, you know, this 830 to VWAP range, 840s. And the reason I picked that level is just kind of look left right over here, over here. And I'd love to see it kind of blow out through this VWAP exhaustion, which, you know, put the line right there so you can kind of see it. That would be ideal level. Exhaust out and then more failed follow through from there. Uh, GSIT, same deal. Higher the better, failed follow through. Um, you know, this is just one of those that is probably off people's radars at this point and gave up with it. It's just no, you know, it's no different than in the SAI example that I gave multiple times, right? So, um, you know, where everybody kind of tries to figure it out, tries to figure it out, tries to figure it out, gives up, squeezes out, and then steady fade from there. And you'll see that ABLD sort of is doing the same sort of thing, right? Um, and then next up is the continuation side of things. QBTS has been fantastic. Anybody that watched Scan last week knows that I was long, um, Really nice trade. I got long in the 68, 69, 70, 80s range. Um, I sold it a few times around a core. Uh, I've been swinging a core, but continued to re-add uh, and scaled up along the way. So it's right now, it's a pretty good trade. Finally, one that has uh, you know lasted nicely. Uh, there's been a lot of swing trades that I've, I've taken, and, and it would have been more beneficial to sell at the close. Um, but, uh, at any rate, we've had a, a really nice run here. Uh, I would love to see some outlier activity again. I am long, so, you know, it's more hopeful than anything, but, um, you know, I'm going to be selling into any huge rips, uh, but it is a nice, slow, steady kind of grind. It keeps shorts in there. Uh, it did enough to kind of shake out a lot of weak hands and bring lots of shorts in. You see the, the, the wicks that we talk about all the time. And so that is definitely something that I am interested um, and, and potentially still even scaling more if it, if it does set up. You know, I'd love to scale, scale, scale for some sort of squeeze, circuit halts, whatever, and then, you know, sell those and then ride around a, a core from, from there. But again, if it proves what I'm saying wrong and it stays heavy and it fails to, to follow through, then I am not going to overstay. So you could be as bold up as you want and think that it could go to the moon. But if the tape suggests that, you know, what I'm thinking is wrong, then I need to respect the tape. Um, VSTM, this is what I would call a transitional day, sort of, uh, you know, a spot where maybe somebody is is actually soaking the the float here, getting in, you know, positioning in. Maybe we th see a, a, a filing. 
Um, you know, who knows? But uh, what I'd be looking for, and uh, we talked about how, you know, I felt like any flush under a dollar was, was a cover just because it felt like they were, um, you know, kind of controlling the tape, pinning it around one. But um, they did squeeze it out after hours just for a, a quick minute before coming right back down. They're in no rush. So in my opinion, if we do see this flush down, let's just say 85, 90 cents over the next two days, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, I'd be looking to see if they start to soak. And if you start to see it go down to 85, then come back and firm up 90, 95 Next day, flushes down to 90, comes back, firms up 95 or dollar. That's something that I might want to participate on the long side because then that would be giving me the wicks that I'm looking for and I'd be looking for a continuation pattern. Um, and then last but not least, I had two other potential liquidity traps. Uh, no positions on those. The only position that I had that I, I've been talking about is the QBTS. Um, but this is a... a uh, you know, liquidity trap setup, obviously, and, you know, we have 24 million shares, and we went down to 1 million shares. So maybe we only have 500,000 on, on Tuesday. Uh, if we start to base over 230, 240s, 250s, that's when I'm really interested in it. Same deal with EEIQ. Um, you know, we had 30, 32 million shares, we went down to 500,000, and then we went down to 300,000, right? So this is very similar to uh, the big trade, uh, that we had, which was in VB. And this was another liquidity trap that we were prepared for, 120 million shares down to 800,000 gapped up. And then it had another 80,000. So that was a huge move. Uh, for those of you guys that followed along on, on Twitter, it was pretty big trade, pretty big opportunity. And uh, hopefully it is making sense to you what these liquidity traps are all about. Once again, a liquidity trap does not mean that it is just a long. I want to be proven right. I want to see it over prior resistance. And remember, if it squeezes out, there's a good chance that that's it. Don't anticipate that it's going to have an outlier move. Let it prove it. But remember, a liquidity trap is anticipating the cover coming through. And the reason why I'm anticipating the cover coming through is because it traded a huge amount of volume and then the volume just got killed it held better than it you know likely was was expected and then if anybody is short there's not much liquidity for them to cover so if it ramps up there's going to be a lot of momentum players chasing but there's also going to be shorts that are competing to cover and that's when we start to have these outlier big moves you know, something like this, you can anticipate, and it's a high probability trade. Uh, the only thing that you can do wrong is kind of forcing it, where, you know, you're forcing it to do what you think. However, if I start in, I want to see it ramp up, consolidate, or start to ramp up again. I might add on those dips, ramp up, consolidate, and as long as it's doing dip and rips and it's not breaking down, I know I'm on the right side. As it speeds up, I want to be there selling into the rips as you saw me on ENVP because you never know when that next candle is going to be the last candle. So it's always safe to go ahead and do that. Anyway, that's it for, you know, a little bit of review, what I'm kind of prepared for. Um, I think there's going to be great opportunities this week, but once again, it's really about just staying familiar with what's out there showing up in the morning, making a plan and being patient. And as I've said, I'm not pushing a lot of buttons right now. And it's not necessarily because there's not plays. It's just better to wait. Uh, it's less stressful. There's a lot of chop, a lot of very controlled moves and small caps. And I'd rather just wait to get on the right side of the move. I've been doing a lot more longs lately, as you've seen. Swing trades have been working a little bit better. There was a period of time where swings were... You know, the intraday was the way to go. And, you know, I tried to let them work. And the next day that gapped down and, you know, it was just better to sell it all uh, instead of, uh, you know, doing doing anything like a, a swing trade like I had done on a, on a few of those. So anyway, that's it. Uh, we'll catch you guys in the room tomorrow. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And uh, Celtics are on tonight. Unbelievable game uh, on uh, what was that? Friday night? Saturday night. Saturday night. 
uh, for those of you guys that watched, where it went down to like the last couple seconds and uh, the lead changed multiple times. Uh, pretty crazy if you're a Boston fan. All right, catch you guys in the room.